Welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tom Spidaleri. I'm a board pre- member of the Friends of Lawrence Heritage State Park, and with me today is the board president, Joe Bella. We're here today to celebrate 114 years of Thelma Todd. Today is her birthday. Now, normally we do this at the Heritage State Park. It's been done well over 10 years. Have a big birthday party, a big bash, a movie or two of Thelma, but due to COVID-19, we can't have the big, huge sellout crowd that we always have of well over 100 people that attend every year. So this year, we decided to come down to Lawrence Cable TV and want to thank them for allowing us here today to celebrate 114 years of Thelma's life. What's going to happen today is over the next hour or so, Um, Thelma Todd historian, local historian, Joe Bell is going to be speaking about her life and he's got some of his collection here of Thelma's personal items and autographs and then we're going to show some of the movie posters that she was in and that's how today's going to go along and then at the end we're going to have a little celebration for her. Uh, Joe and I went down to Bellevue Cemetery and and left some flowers at Thelma's um, gravesite. So uh, for her birthday, again, she's 114 today. And then at the end of the day, after we're done with all the history, we're going to sit and sing happy birthday. Now, when we sing happy birthday at the Heritage, everybody can hear us because the windows are open and everything's going well. So today, when it's time to sing happy birthday to Thelma, I'd like everybody to head outside or open up their doors or windows. I know it's warm out today. And sing loud and proud happy birthday Uh, because I know she'll be able to hear us up there if we're loud. And I know it's a summer day today, and I know there's a certain summer that's home watching this right now. So, Summer, when you're at home, make sure you go outside and you sing Happy Birthday to Thelma Todd. Thank you all, and Joe, thank you for uh, offering your services today as historian of Thelma Todd history. Now we're going to turn this over to Joe without further ado. Thank you very much, Tom, for the board member. Park. Uh, again, my name is Joe Bell, president of the French group here. And uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic situation, um, we're, ho- we're holding her birthday celebration in a different location. Before I forget, I want to thank uh, Jose Frank Domingo, cameraman Domingo, Jose Frank, and executive director Daniel Rajic for having us put on this wonderful um, birthday dedication to her. Lawrence's finest actress, Thelma A. Todd. What I'm going to do first of all is to read a brief bio- biography of Thelma. So I'll begin with that. Thelma A. Todd. Thelma Alice Todd was born in Lawrence, Massachusetts on July 29, 1906 at a house formerly located at the site of the General Tire Store on South Broadway. Her parents were John Shaw Todd and Alice Edwards and they were married on June 20th, 1900, in the front parlor of the groom's father's house in Lawrence. Their first child, William, was born July 27th in 1903. Tragically, he was to lose his life in an accident on August 25th, 1910, at a farm in Randolph, Vermont. Thelma first attended the Saunders School, later moving on to the Packard Grammar School, and then Lawrence High School, graduating in 1924. And also in 1924, she was a model in a vaudeville show at the Empire Theater, known as the Fur Fashion Review of 1924. The same year, also, Thelma reportedly won a small role in her first film, a local production called The Life of St. Genevieve, which was produced by Rosario and Peter Contarino, brothers who had bought an old movie camera, borrowed some cash, and created the Aurora Film Incorporated. Together they ran amateur nights in Lawrence, which enabled them to spot talent for their movies. And it was because she attended one of these events that Thelma was ultimately given a role in The Life of St. Genevieve. It seems that she did well enough in that part and that she was also cast in their next film, Tangled Hearts. While attending teacher training at the Lowell Normal School, Thelma's student taught history and English classes to six and eight year olds but she was never an accredited teacher. However, in June 1925, Thelma was voted Miss Lawrence by the local Elks Club, and then later voted Miss Massachusetts by the State Elks Club. Shortly after winning, she joined the famous player's Lasky Studio School 
in Long Island, New York. In 1926, the students of the Paramount School released their first film, Fascinating Youth, which was Thelma's first feature silent film. In 1929, she joined the Hell Roach Studios and she found ready work with comedy greats Buster Keaton, Wheeler and Woolsey, Joey Brown, Laurel and Hardy, and of course the four Marx brothers. In 1932, Thelma married Pat DiCicco and divorced him in 1934. After making over 120 films, comedy shorts, with Zazu Pitts and Patsy Kelly, and also full-length features, sadly, Thelma's body was found on December 16, 1935, at 10.30 a.m. in her 1934 Lincoln Phaeton convertible by her maid, May Whitehead. According to the Los Angeles Homicide Bureau, her death was due to accidental carbon monoxide poisoning. The end. Okay, what I'm going to do is, um, oh, before I forget, of course, we have a beautiful birthday cake uh, put together by a local Italian bakery um, with the uh, Thelma's age, 114. Um, so I'll just show some of my items from my personal collection. This I brought, um, it's a photo of both Thelma and Zesu Pitts, and also both their autographs, and it looks like a birthday tribute to both, with uh, one cake signed, uh, or cut the cake by, the, by both actresses. Okay, and then um, I brought her hat, and with the actual bag it came in, um, we don't know too much about the hat, although I suspect she had purchased this possibly in Scotland. Uh, in 1933, she had made a movie in England with Ida Lupino's uh, father, Stanley Lupino. The movie was called You Made Me Love You. And she might have taken a side trip to uh, Scotland to purchase the hat. Um, but I did purchase that years ago and was told that was her original hat. And also, again, the original bag that came with it. Next item is her missile. Uh, Thelma and her mother Alice attended the uh, local Protestant church in um, Los Angeles, Hollywood. And this is the missile that uh, Thelma used. And I'm going to read what Thelma wrote to her mother. To Mama, may I always think of you, serve you, and love you. And even then, my debt to you will still be unpaid. Devotedly, Thelma. The date is April 8th, 1928. So she wrote this um, to her mother. And another autographed picture here, just Thelma Todd. And this is one of the, uh, Mar the four Marx Brother movies, uh, Hoss Feathers. And a couple of her posters here. And let's see. Oh. This is a photo of her paternal family. Her grandparents in the middle, the Todds. John Todd, Delma's father. Her two uncles here and three uncles there, aunt and aunt. So again, that's Delma's uh, paternal uh, family. It's melting. Okay. Now we're going to. Um, we're going to show some of the uh, posters, the few from my collection uh, for Thelma's movie posters. Are also, they're, they're called lobby cards. And this one is the uh, Vamping Venus silent movie. Uh, Thelma had a part in it um, with a bunch of other uh, famous uh, act actors, actresses. Uh, that one I've never seen, um, so I'm not even sure if it's available. But anyway, that's... Um, Vamping Venus, very popular when it uh, came out as a, uh, a silent. Next one. Hoss Feathers, one of the two Marx Brother movies that Thelma had made in the 1930s, from uh, this one again, Paramount. Um, so she did uh, perform pretty, she did get a good part in this one, I have to admit. Um, and then she did another one uh, afterwards. Um, Next one. Next one. Feathers, the Four Marx Brothers. Okay, Bum Voyage with uh, Patsy Kelly. Um, this one is an original lobby card, you can tell by the condition. And these are, are getting quite rare. 
um, a little pricey as well. But it's, this is one of uh, Thelma's shots, Bum Voyage. Very funny. Okay, next one. Okay, this one is more of a drama as opposed to the usual comedies that Thelma was really, really good at. Uh, this one was Take the Stand. Uh, this one was a full length feature, uh, talkie, of course. And Jack LaRue was very popular. Gail Patrick, also very popular at the time. And um, Thelma had a part. Um, she did get second billing, which is good in, the, in Hollywood anyway. Uh, this one I think I had seen, again, it's not a comedy, it's strictly drama. And Thelma did quite well on this one. Okay, this one is a, uh, another full-length movie Thelma made. Uh, this one is semi-comedy. Um, I'm not sure the, quite sure the name at, at the moment, but it is a talkie. And she, uh, she did quite well on this one as a, uh, a second part, but again, not starring. In fact, the only movie I think she really was given a starring role was Klondike, and that was a drama film. Next one. Oh, another Vamping Venus. Yeah, this is another Vamping Venus. Charlie Murray was pretty popular uh, in his day in, uh, at the first National Pictures in uh, Hollywood, as well as Louise Fazenda. Uh, so Thelma did get third billing in this one. Um, again, a silent vamping Venus, first national picture. Okay, this one is Trial and Marriage. And again, this one is a drama. And um, let's see, she is it's Columbia Pictures. And she got fourth billing in this one. And again, it's a, a drama, you know. I think she did, I, I think she, she did better in the comedies though, I, I think. And she probably enjoyed making those as opposed to the drama uh, type. Okay, this one is The Crash. Uh, this one is a silent. I've never seen this one. Um, I have yet to see it, and I'm not sure if it exists for that matter. A lot of the silents are missing uh, due to the melting of the, uh, the film itself. The material, it wasn't too good for, for storage. And a lot of the uh, tapes, the, fi the, the film itself had been destroyed um, accidentally or unintentionally. And this is a first national picture. Um, she didn't get listed on this, uh, but Milton Sills, again, was a uh, popular drama actor of the uh, late 20s and early 30s. Next one. Your favorite one. What's this one? Oh, Catch as Catch Can. Yeah, this one, uh, I've seen this several times. Uh, Zezu, Pitts, and Thelma Todd. To me, Zezu, Pitts, was the most comedic between uh, Zezu and Patsy Kelly. Patsy Kelly was okay, but I still, my preference is Zezu Pitts. Her, her movies to me were much funnier. Uh, Zezu was more clowny, clown like than Patsy Kelly. Uh, Patsy Kelly did a good job on her own, uh, I'll grant her that, but it, uh, Zezu was a, as funny as Thelma, if not funnier, I think. Um, in, in a co uh, comedic way, or the way she acted. Of course, Thelma was the, the beauty of the two. Thelma was the beauty of um, both Patsy Kelly and uh, Zezu. And again, this one is Catch as Catch Can. And um, the actor with Zezu is uh, some Michael uh, Gwynn, that's his name is Mr. Gwynn. He was a popular actor of the late 20s, early 30s as well. Next one. This one I've never seen, uh, The Gay Defender, a, a silent Paramount picture. Um, Thelma did get second billing after Richard Dix. Richard Dix was a very popular actor. Um, I think Thelma felt very, very proud and uh, honored to be playing opposite Richard Dix. Uh, he, he was in a lot of the uh, popular movies, um, like I said, the late tw um, the silence and then the 30s. And in this one, I have quite a few pictures of her in this movie. Unfortunately, I have never seen the movie, and I'm not sure if it even exists. And that's by Paramount Pictures. Aha, Corsair. In this movie, Thelma's name was changed uh, by the director, and her name is Alison Lloyd. And um, directed by her boyfriend, Roland West, um, in ho from Hollywood. And um, Chester Morris, um, actually, he played Dick Tracy later on in the 1930s. 
um, but he um, was an actor in his own right. He did very well in Hollywood. And again, I think Thelma felt honored to be opposite him in this particular movie. Um, f Frank McHugh is the gentleman dancing with Thelma. He was very, very popular in comedies. He lived quite a while, and I remember him on some late uh, TV shows up until he passed in the 1980s, 90s even. So Frank McHugh lived quite a while, and that movie is Corsair. Very popular uh, talkie. Oh, another one, and there's uh, Mr. West with Thelma. Um, not with West, that's, um, yeah, Chester Morris, rather. Mr. Morris, again, with Thelma. Um, beautiful lobby card, and again, that is an original lobby card. And they're getting to be quite rare, rare again. Um, okay, next one. Okay, this one is a silent movie, not Thelma's first, but one of her later silents with, of course, Gary Cooper doing a Western. It had to be Gary Cooper. And um, I'm not sure if she was ever, she wouldn't probably be aware of how popular he became later. Um, and then she got second billing in this uh, Paramount picture. And then William Powell, who also was quite popular later on uh, after this movie, uh, was almost as, as popular as Gary Cooper. Um, so this was quite a movie, a silent. I've seen it several times. And they, I think they both did, or they actually, the three of them did an excellent job in this particular movie, uh, written by uh, Zane Gray, a lot of a popular Western style writer. And the next one. Okay, this one is Speak Easily. Uh, Thelma's in this one, it's a comedy. Uh, quite long. It's a long movie, and uh, she had a pretty good part in it. Uh, she, it's one of the outfits she's in. She's in quite a few of them in this particular movie. And the next one, and it, it's a talkie. And there they are, Delma Todd and Patsy Kelly in one of their shots. I'm not sure we're quite sure this one, but um, like I said, Patsy was okay. Um, I don't know if anyone else would have taken her place. But I, my preference, again, is Zazu. To me, Zazu was a f very, very funny, comedic actress. Um, and I think Patsy kind of followed close to that. Okay. And this is an original lobby card. After the Dance, Columbia Picture. This one is a talkie. Uh, Nancy Carroll and George Murphy, both very popular in the um, early to mid-1930s. Um, possibly after. Um, again, this one is a drama, and uh, this is one of the outfits she wore. She wore quite a few in this one, and uh, there were some music, musical numbers and some music uh, highlighted. But uh, again, it was a it was a drama um, after titled After the Dance. Okay. Okay. Speak easily. And there's Buster Keaton, and. Um, Let's see, that's the other guys. Jimmy Durante, of course. Yeah, Buster Keaton and Jimmy Durante. And so I guess Thelma got the third billing. Um, very popular movie. And this w I've seen a few times. Um, a lot of action, comedy. Yeah, it was very, very comedic. And I think Buster Keaton worked well, as did Jimmy Durante with Thelma in this one. Uh, it was like they all fit in perfectly. And very, very funny comedy. Uh, full-length uh, feature movie. Okay, this one I have not seen, called Deception. Uh, it's a talkie um, by Columbia Pictures. Um, it's probably a drama. I don't think it's a comedy. Uh, I would say more of a, a drama um, type of a movie. And I think that's Leo Carrillo in back on the on the right-hand side with the cigar. And uh, Thelma had a pretty good part in this one, uh, Columbia Picture. Okay. And this one, Two for Tonight, she played opposite, of course, Bing Crosby and uh, Joan Bennett, both very popular uh, stars of their day, as well as Mary Boland and Lynn Overman, I've heard of. And then Thelma got the um, fifth billing on this one. Uh, Bing sings in this one quite a bit. So this is more like a musical. Um, 
and Thelma had a part in it, but not a large part, but she got to participate, which was good. Um, again, one of the famous people that Thelma uh, played opposite in her day in, in Hollywood. Okay. Mary Stevens, MD. Kate Francis was very popular actress in the uh, early, mid-30s, and possibly later. Lyle Talbot was also popular. Glenda Farrell uh, also. So Thelma got um, one, two, three, fourth billing in this one. And uh, Una O'Connor as well. Yeah, Una O'Connor was a, a nice uh, actress, famous English actress. And this one was a Warner Brothers and Vitaphone picture. And I, th this one I haven't seen. So I'm uh, hoping, hoping it's available somehow, somewhere. Um, a lot of famous people in this one, as well as Thelma. Okay, um, this one, oh, this one is asleep, but the f this one is the funniest one, I think, that uh, Thelma and Zezu made. Um, the gentleman on the left with the hat looking, you know, leering to his left, uh, he plays a Boston doctor, um, like a, a, on the idea of a chiropractor, in this uh, shot. And he did an excellent job. And this movie was a classic comedy, I think, of uh, Thelma's shots with Zezu. This is one of the best ones. Uh, there were a couple. There were a couple of really top-notch comedy shots. To me, this is the second one in, um, of the two of, the, of my choice. Next one. Oh, this is a good one, Joe. <laughs> For Halloween, yeah. For Halloween. The Haunted House, Chester Conklin and Thelma Todd. Chester Conklin, again, very popular, uh, 30s. This one is a silent, though, uh, first national picture. And really spooky. Um, and this is a uh, original copy of a, it's a copy actually of a, of a lobby card. Um, but this one, Thelma was really freaked out, so to speak, uh, as we call it nowadays. But she played a good part and she was um, quite frightened of all the, the goings on in, the, uh, in this particular movie. Uh, it's a movie you see before Halloween to get into the mood, I think. <laughs> it's a Halloween type movie, The Haunted House. Oh, Take the Stand again. Um, this one again, drama. And this was a Liberty Special um, picture, a studio name, I guess, in Hollywood. Um, to me, I, it, it looks okay, but again, I prefer Thelma in, in her comedic roles, okay? That's my, my preference. So, but uh, I think she did pretty well here, Take the Stand. And um, she did quite well uh, in making this one as well as others. But like I say, my, prefer my preference is her comedy. And that's me. Another Corsair with Chester Morris. And mentions, of course, Roland West, the director. And um, unfortunately, Thelma's not mentioned in this one, although her name is in this picture is uh, Alison Lloyd. Um, the movie was okay. It wasn't a blockbuster by any uh, step of the imagination. Um, but um, it was decided that Thelma should get her real name back for her other movies. So she re retained her original name and not to use Alison Lloyd again. Okay, and we got one more. Okay, this one is um, a funny comment. Laurel Hardy, one of their funny, funny ones. Fra Diavolo. Um, okay, and it, it means that my, the devil's brother okay, in English. So you'll see two versions of this particular movie, two different titles meaning the same, the same uh, meaning. Fra Diavolo, Devil's Brother. Dennis King, um, very, very popular um, Hollywood actor. Again, late 20s, silent, and then 30s, uh, and so forth. Um, Thelma got second billing, which is good after, uh, no, actually, one, two, three, third billing. Laurel and Hardy. This was a funny one. I have to say, this was very, very uh, uh, wonderful comedy. Um, and she did several with uh, Laurel and Hardy, I might add. But this one was one of the funny ones, and I, I enjoyed uh, watching uh, this particular movie. And that's all of them. I have more at home, but I only had enough time and room to bring what I brought. Okay, oh, the one fell here. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, this will be the heat. So we've got a beautiful cake here for Thelma. Thelma, happy birthday, Thelma Todd. Um, so I guess we can cut the cake. Before we cut the cake, Joe, we need get everybody to stand up at home. Yes. Stand up. Stand up if you're watching. I know some people are. Open up your window so Thelma can hear you upstairs. And we're going to sing happy birthday to Thelma Todd on three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Thelma. Happy birthday to you. Hey, we sounded like Law and Hardy there. Think so. We yeah. sounded pretty good considering we didn't rehearse this one. Yeah, exactly. Great happy birthday out to you, uh, Thelma. I know you're watching down on us. I know you enjoyed it today. So, we want to thank everybody, Joe. Thank you, Joe, for being the historian of Thelma Todd and giving us a great story. And thank you for coming to help out and, you know, for taking care of things for Thelma. And Thelma's looking down at us. I know she is. So. And um, we're going to push the cake up here. Oh. Yeah, so it can be seen by the camera. Yeah. It's hard to hold on to. Yeah. It's a beautiful cake. It's a beautiful cake. Yeah. Happy birthday. Just having some issues <laughs> with the cake. 114. 114 One. years. Yep. And next year will be 115. I'm hoping we'll be back. At the Her Lawrence Heritage State Park. Possible. We don't know yet. Depends on the uh, situation going on in the world. Some other expedition that Joe and I are going to do coming up. Yes. Enjoy the day. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Bell. I'm president of the Friends of the Lawrence Heritage State Park. And with me today is a uh, board member, Tom Spitaleri. And we're here to place f these flowers on the grave of Lawrence's most famous actress, and most beautiful, I might add, uh, Thelma Alice Todd. Um, born in 19, uh, July 29th, 1906, passed away December 16th, um, 1935. And she's buried here with an uncle, aunt, and uh, of course her mother, Alice, is uh, with her. Um, as everyone may or may not be aware, Thelma was uh, cremated after the funeral in, in Wake. And uh, she, her mother's ashes, her ashes stayed with her mother until her mother passed. and. She um, wanted to be buried with her mother for eternity, so the ashes are in the mother's casket th together, and uh, they're both here uh, resting. So I'm going to place these flowers on, on the Thelma Todd, or the Todd grave, right here, and there's a picture of Thelma. And again, uh, nine, July 29th, 1906, till um, 1935 passed away from carbon monoxide poisoning, unfortunately. Um, Tom, do you want to say something? No, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Today is her birthday. She's 114 years old, and this is one of these people you, we're not going to, we got to remember her every year. Not for the, her accomplishments and what she's done, and people have come to this city year after year to pay respects. In fact, there are brand new flowers on the what we would consider the backside of the grave that were just recently planted, probably for her birthday. Happy birthday, Thelma. Hoping you're resting in peace. Thank you all.